Howdy tubers, welcome back to the Zach Life. So today we're working on a 101 year old oil well. Uh, the, the actual well is drilled in 1921. The unit, I guess, is mostly what we'll be working on. Uh, it's not quite that old, though it is a very, very old unit. It's probably built, I would guess, at the very newest, it's about a 1940, probably built in the 30s. You can kind of tell because of the, the construction of the gearbox and stuff. Anyway, I actually rebuilt this gearbox a few years ago. Uh, did it kind of a hack together way. If you'd like to see it, I'll put a link in the description and I'll put a, a link to it in the in the end screen of the video. You can click on and watch. Uh, kind of got some heck because of the way I did it. Uh, everybody was everybody was trying to roast me, but as they say, uh, the proof in the pudding is in the tasting, and uh, still looks like it runs fine to me. Or you'll see in a minute it does. Anyway, I got several things to do today. I got to pack the stuff in box. Uh, we're gonna grease it. We got to change the belts. I'm gonna do a tubing rotation, do some inspection. I'm gonna talk about some of the wellhead components. Uh, sure is a Monday, let's get after it. Now to start with, I need to explain what triggered this maintenance event. Like a typical Monday, somehow or another it rolled this belt off and has got it wound up in his shiv, pulled tight, locked everything down and blown the fuses in the fuse box. So this gearbox has got a ratio of about 10 to one. Most of these big units will have a gear ratio of at least 30 to one or maybe even higher now the bigger units typically have higher ratios and anyway what this means is is there's a very high load on these belts it takes a lot more force to turn the shaft because it's a less gear ratio and it's got to have a jack shaft to slow it down the first thing i've got to do one handed is take and cut this belt this thing may kind of pop <laughs> Now the bad thing, when this happens, this is not super uncommon. It's uncommon for them to lock the unit down, but <clears throat> it's got a seal back in here on both sides on the jack shaft and on the gearbox. And sometimes a belt will get back there and eat the seal of it. It looks like these are both probably okay. So I got you an aerial view here. Uh, I'm gonna roll these belts on. It's a big pain to have to unbolt this whole jack shaft mechanism and move it forward and put the belts on. I've rolled them on and I've moved this forward and done it the right way. It doesn't seem to make any difference. I'm sure y'all will give me some heck about it, but bite me, I don't care. So what I always do is I'll jump on this side of the weight. This will cause the unit to roll a little bit. <clears throat> Something about like that. I'll start with the middle belt. I'm gonna turn it as far as I can by hand. Ugh. take a pipe wrench and bite up against that belt and that keeps the belt from being able to to come out of this groove Ugh. give it about all I got and it'll go on there a good way to lose a finger and which I have <laughs> it's not that big a deal it just cost a lot of money Same deal. Ugh. Ugh. All right, got that done. So it's got, it's obviously got three of the belts on the other side of the jack shaft here. I'm gonna leave these, they look pretty good. These last a long, long time. They're not under nearly as high of a load. Check the oil in this jack shaft here. Now it's, between the low and full mark. These jack shafts hold very little oil total, probably less than a pint. Uh, it leaks a little bit, not not much, not volumetrically very much, but I have to put oil in it about, just about once a month or every other month. Um, it does not take much. I got a Gatorade bottle full of 90 weight, and uh, I just pour about, run it over and make a mess pour about that much in it and that'll be that'll be way over full so 
So the next thing is I want to check the oil in this gearbox. This is actually the first time I've checked the oil in this gearbox since I rebuilt it two or three years ago, whenever it was. It was full then, and I know it's still full now because it doesn't leak. There's no oil under it. There's no grease on it. You can tell that there's nothing leaked out of it. So however much it started with is how much is still in it. But anyway, I'm going to show you anyway because it's neat. It's just got these little petcock valves. You open these and, you know, you, this will show you the level. This would be full. This would be add. So you basically want oil here, but not necessarily here. And so we'll open both of these valves, and sure enough, we've got oil there. And don't have oil here, so the level is between these two somewhere. The first thing we're going to grease here is the wrist pins. It's only been maybe three weeks since I greased this thing, and so it's probably not going to hold a ton of grease. The other side. This one is a little bit thirstier. We got to grease the uh, saddle bearing on both sides, but I'm gonna shimmy down the beam here and and do the uh, saddle bearing, the tail bearing first. Excuse me. Uh. this thing strapped to my forehead now these two bearings the saddle bearing and tail bearing are just bronze bushed bearings they're not roller bearings like the wrist pins and these typically leak um, they don't really have good seals out here they get wore out and so to fill this bearing up with grease isn't really necessary we'll just pump about a half a tube of grease in it and a half a tube of grease in the, in the saddle bearing and call it good So now I'm going to take care of the stuff actually here on the well. The first thing I'm going to do is shut this valve, which this is the line that goes to the to the separator, the flow line. I'm going to shut this valve and uh, open the bleeder to bleed the pressure off the off the tubing. So the first thing I want to do, all this stuff is about a year old, roughly, as I can remember. Uh, the stuffing box, uh, I mean the pumping tea, the stuffing box, the packing, is all about a year old. All this stuff is steel, it's forged steel, and I need to inspect it. I want to see how it looks, if it's surviving. Uh, I want to unscrew the stuffing box and see if it looks corroded right up. And if it needs replaced, I'll schedule the rig to come over here and change it. Everything else, uh, as far as this here and out here, is all stainless. We don't have to worry about it yet. So to change this packing, I'll we'll have to back these bolts off, and I'm going to go ahead and back them off. Because it'll make the stone box easier to turn. So I can't hold this up and get you a close shot. This looks very good. There's a little bit of mild corrosion on the bottom. I expected to see about half of these threads ate off. Uh, this will definitely make another year. 
I have switched to brass liners, <clears throat> extra long brass liners, and I've heard that that helps. It's an electrolysis that these things create that eats the stuff up. If you put a brass liner that sticks quite a bit farther, deeper than you need, I've heard that helps. I don't understand why, but it seems to. So this top piece should come off here. Usually I carry I carry rope and I've got a couple of pieces of rope with like bungee cord ends on it and I usually will tie it to the bridle uh, but this one's so tall I can't reach it so I'll have to hold this up which is kind of a pain. Anyway, it's just got these rubbers in here. I'm gonna take a screwdriver and dig them out. There's four, there's one, two, Three. Here's a new one. These have got Teflon and brass flakes in them. These are the best. The Teflon makes it slick, and the brass flakes uh, keep the uh, keep the liner clean. So there are three the same, and one has got a flat bottom. The flat bottom obviously goes on the bottom. Now about once a week for the next year or so, I'll come by and turn all these bolts about a half round or so, and that should keep this thing from leaking any. The brass liners work better. They make brass and steel. The brass ones wear out, uh, but the steel ones leak more. The steel kind of eats the rubbers up faster or something. So what are we looking at here? This is obviously the flow line. This that goes to the tank batteries. Uh, we got a valve, a check, a union. Here's where you take it apart if you need to work on whatever. This is called a pumping tee. And it's effectively just a, a cross with different sizes and different types of thread. So this is eight round tubing. This is eight round tubing. This is 11 and a half nipple, like a nipple you buy at Lowe's or Tractor Supply. And this is a one inch nipple. Uh, the tubing starts right here. Uh, this tubing goes pretty much all the way to the bottom. It's hanging in the casing. This is the casing. This is five and a half inch OD casing. Uh, this is the surface casing. So this is has got seven inch set about probably about 150 feet deep uh, that is to protect any groundwater and then it's got five and a half that go all the way to the very bottom of the hole uh, the oil comes in the bottom of the purse so i've kind of explained that and then the tubing here is actually dangling in the in the casing so this is a casing vent if i open this it'll have gas pressure <clears throat> these wells stay shut in they make very a very small amount of gas um, that is the pressure you hear is accumulation of months and months these wells out here are very wet they make a very high volume of water per oil and the gas pressure seems to try to hold that water back and they'll still make about the same oil that's kind of touch and go depending on the well so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get my big pipe wrench on the top of the tubing here and we're going to try to spin it inside the slips of the wellhead. So inside here is a set of slips that have little teeth that have grabbed the tubing. The tubing is sitting in those. Now, <clears throat> there's an upset here, and this upset won't go past this ring. And if it did, it would, you know, it would hit this. Nothing's actually going to fall, uh, but I'm not sure how well this is going to work. This sometimes is hit and miss. You've got to remember that the tubing weight that's hanging in the wellhead here is probably about 8,000 pounds, roughly, plus some, plus some fluid weight. It's probably around 9,000 pounds of, of, of force that's hanging in the wellhead. That's what I'm having to overcome to twist it. That's why it's such a, uh, such a big deal to, uh, to have to turn it. That's all I got. So what I'm trying to do there, when they dig a well, the hole isn't, isn't ever perfectly straight. You know, if the tubing was gone, you couldn't look down the hole and see all the way to the bottom. There's going to be a slight angle at the very least to the well and the tubing is going to lay over against the low side of the casing. Now in reality what happens is often they're they're sort of corkscrewed as they go down or there'll be uh, different different you know there'll be sort of wavy deviation. Uh, a minimal amount is 100% normal. Um, 
In fact, up to one degree is considered completely normal. Uh, but the problem is, is the tubing is going to lay on the low side and the rods are going to lay on the low side and the rods can saw or wear a hole in the tubing. And so my idea behind turning the tubing is, is every six, eight, six months or so, I'll come turn the tubing like a fifth of a round and, and where the high spots are, it'll give you a new surface area to rub on. So you don't rub just one spot through the tubing. Anyway, that's my idea behind that. So this thing is done, it's ready to turn on. Unfortunately, I don't have the fuses to refuse this. I'm gonna finish my rat killing this morning. I'll run back in and grab some lunch. I got some electrical due this afternoon. I'm gonna get the bucket truck. We'll come back out here uh, with a bucket and some fuses and we'll crank this sucker up here in a couple hours. All right, so I'm back out here, got some fuses. I got the flow line valve open, uh, the bleeder shut. Let's go stick these fuses in this thing and kick it off. Stuff in the box is leaking. I believe it got it. That's about the size of it appreciate you watching if you'd like to watch the gearbox video you can click on it right there like share subscribe and i'll catch you on the next one